Yes, yes, people. Welcome back to the Magpie Channel TV. Today's video, a transfer video. Who would have thought? Already. Not January yet, but it's an emergency. This could be an emergency transfer because we don't need to wait for January if you let to believe reports that Newcastle United are in a move for free agent David De Gea. We're going to get into all that to keep that crisis after it's been revealed that Nick Pope will face up to five months out with the shoulder injury he sustained against my United in that win on Saturday night. Another game, another injury. And it's not just a little one, it's a long-term one yet again. I tell you what, I've got my keeper top on. They might want to sign me up. I'm ready. Get me in there. Get my TMC number one in net. It may have to. I tell you what, I won't ask for £375,000 a week. And that's the big issue here. That is the big concern that everyone's talking about because David De Gea at Manchester United was on £375,000. British sterling pounds. Can you believe it? Pfft, mental amount of money. To be fair though, they've just given Marcus Rashford a new contract for £350,000 a week. So <laughs> they haven't learnt the lessons, have they? But David De Gea who's uh, just turned 33, so he's, he's young for a goalkeeper, to be fair, isn't he? You know what I mean? He's, for a goalkeeper, he's been in the game so long, and he was at Man United for so long. 12 years at Old Trafford, then released in the summer as a free agent. Still can't get a club, and that's the question I found myself asking, why hasn't he got a club? So I've been doing a bit of research, and he actually turned down clubs in the summer, a Saudi club as well. He turned down moves to Saudi Arabia, because he recently got married in the summer, and uh, his Spanish girlfriend doesn't fancy moving that far away. And apparently they'd be happy to stay in England or in Spain, where they're currently residing. They're between both Spain and England, so they want to move to one of those two clubs. He was apparently close to joining Real Betis, but that one fell through. Was that because of his wage demands? I mean, it'll fall through for Newcastle if he's asking for big bucks as well, because there's no way we smash our wage structure for a temporary goalkeeper signing. But to hear, he's been, like, listen, he has turned down big money moves from the Far East. He's been turned down big money moves abroad. So it's not just money for him. And at this stage of his career, I think he just, he'll just want to play again. I think he'll just want to play again. He doesn't need money when he's been picking up 400 grand a week nearly at my age. You know, he's <laughs> just shy of that. He doesn't necessarily need the cash, does he? He doesn't need that cash injection. Uh, I think he'll just want to play. And if Newcastle Nettie Howe turned to him and said, listen, we'll give you a, a six-month deal. Till the end of the season. See how you get on. See how you go from there. I don't think he'd turn that down. I think he'd snap your hands off that. And the thing about De Gea. I think you want to prove Manchester United wrong. For letting him go. And what better place to go that. To the real United. The only United now in the Premier League. That's overtaken Manchester United. And to stick it to them. Because even he's been putting out tweets himself. For little cryptic messages and stuff. About Owen Honor's mistakes. And Man United conceding goals. And losing games. Kind of way of bigging himself up. And being like. See. Two fingers up, told you so, should have kept me. To hear, won't ask for 375 grand a week now. He won't. Listen, people keep saying, ah, oh, but we're not going to get him because he's on 370. He's not on 375 grand a week. He's actually on zero pound a week. He's not earning a penny. He's not getting out. He's on less than the door. Do you know what I mean? He's not getting a single thing, so he would take the money. And if Newcastle offered him, I mean, we wouldn't offer him anywhere near that, wouldn't offer him half that. I think max we would go would be 150. Max, but maybe he may look at that and think, right? Well, I can make 150 grand a week uh, for the next six months. That's a nice couple of million, easy in it. Um, and then I can potentially be playing Champions League football. I'll definitely be playing Premier League football for a team that is going for Champions League football again in that top four race. So and in cup competitions. So David here on his side, I think he'd take it. It's a win-win for him, no doubt about it. You know, it's still close to Manchester. He's still in between there and London and Spain. So it's not bad for him at all. It's not bad for him and his misses. Um, just rains just as much up here as it does in Manchester so that wouldn't be a problem the question then leads to will Newcastle United actually go for him because there's loads of reports today saying that we're going to make this shock move for him after Pope's been ruled out for, for months will we actually go for David De Gea for me I'd be very surprised I'd be surprised if Eddie Howe was looking at that thinking we need De Gea get, get out there now Ashworth get on the phone get him signed I would be very surprised if we did at the same time it would be sensible, I suppose, to get a, an experienced keeper like for backup and to uh, challenge Martin Dubravka for his position so Dubravka hasn't just got it easy where he's only got Loris Karius or Mark Gillespie. Mark Billy Gillespie would be better off getting Keith Gillespie back. I haven't seen Mark Gillespie play. What does he do? He's got the best job in the world. Chiali there. Big him up though. Joy Lad in the dressing room. Living the dream. But you know what I mean? If you've only got Dubravka and Karius, 
is anyhow thinking, oh, I'll tell you what, if an injury to Brafka happens, then we are massively knackered because then we've got Karius as our number one. Or if the Brafka has a stinker for the next few games and then you've only got Karius or Gillespie to turn to with all these games, a game every few days. If it's not the Champions League, it's the Carabao Cup. And then if it's not the Carabao Cup, it's the FA Cup against the Mackhams in, in just a month's time. So there's plenty of fixtures, but we have got plenty of goalkeepers. I said this in the match reaction after the Man U win when Pope went down. I said if it is serious, which it looked like, then that was probably the one position on the pitch, for me, where we've actually got strength and depth. Well, it is, not just for me. Look at the bench. There's more goalkeepers than anyone else. You know what I mean? There's three keepers on the bench against Chelsea and that, so there's plenty of goalkeepers there. It's just, we've got the quantity, have we got the quality? That's the question. And for me, I, th I think Martin de Rafka's fine. I think de Rafka, for a few months, will more than suffice. I think Martin de Rafka is a very good goalkeeper. Hopefully he can get up to speed again, because he hasn't played much matches, but... You'll obviously say that for De Gea as well, who's been without a club for a few months now. But De Brafka, for me, is a solid goalkeeper. We've seen it in the Premier League. I think he's good enough to step in and do a job. I don't think he's got a howler in him. Could his distribution and everything else be better? Yes, but like Pope, is his shot stopping as good as Pope's? No, but it, I don't think it's that far off. I, I think Martin De Brafka is a very good goalkeeper who would get into most Premier League teams. Honestly, he's a, he's a top 10 goalkeeper in the Premier League. And for me, for a few months, that'll do. I think he'll do a job, no problem. I wouldn't, even, I wouldn't be bothered about sticking to Braff Green at all for the remainder of the season if that's what it takes with Pope out because of financial fair play. In an ideal world, for me, we go out and sign this uh, blah, 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 bloke from, from uh, Valencia. I'm not even going to try. I forgot his name already. But we go out and sign him. I put him on the screen now. 23-year-old Georgian, so 23, very young, very highly rated goalkeeper. We've had scouts watching him is what's been the report the last few months. So scouts are watching him. Valencia are ready to cash in on the Georgian keeper, but are we really going to invest the amount of money it would take to prize him away in January? I think next summer he'd definitely be on the agenda because, listen, we've all talked about Nick Pope giving the ball away, distribution, everything else, sometimes positional awareness. He can be a bit dodgy in that sense, but we all know how, how amazing of a goalkeeper he is. Old fashioned goalkeeper, shot stopping, which is the bread and butter at the end of the day. Like, I mean, against PSG, he was phenomenal. You know what I mean? It's a shame that he's in such good form at the minute. That he has this injury now but if we go out and get this this keeper that we're linked with for big money and we can push that forward from next summer to january great but in terms of ffp that's not a priority for me we need a striker because of the injuries to wilson and Isaac. we need a striker we still need that midfielder do we even though miley's coming through now do we maybe change our priority from midfielder to goalkeeper because miley stepped up so much and we've got willick and longstaff coming back maybe there's a lot to work out for Newcastle United's recruitment team ahead of the January window and it all again just depends on financial fair play and what we can manoeuvre and what Eddie Howe sees as a priority but a goalkeeper has definitely been on the agenda you know what I mean another one that's been linked for a long time now is Arsenal's Aaron Ramsdale Ramsdale does look set to leave the Gunners in January after falling behind Rhea at the Emirates so he'll definitely be on the move could we even get Ramsdale on loan listen how good of a deal would that be if we could Say to Arsenal, right, well, we've got this Pope injury. We'll take Ramsdale on loan for six months. Maybe if he hits a certain amount of targets or X, Y, Z, the obligation to buy at the end of it, something along those lines. If you get Ramsdale on loan until the summer, that, that would be quality. So we could assess, is he actually better than Pope? Because for me, they're, they're very similar. Um, the reason Raya has replaced Ramsdale at Arsenal is his distribution and sometimes that lack of concentration that Aaron Ramsdale has. But no doubt about it, another English goalkeeper and Ramsdale who is quality, who is very, very good and, and Premier League proven. I like Ramsdale, I like his character. I just don't see him as a massive step up from Nick Pope. Whereas if you looked abroad at these keepers that I mentioned, the Valencia lad, then he does and he is deemed to be one of the next big things. So I think that would suit us better. But it all depends on where the wages are at, where the balances are, the books, the transfer fees, all of that. But Newcastle today, linked with David De Gea on an emergency deal. For me, I mean, I would say why not? Listen, I, if it's not going to hammer our wage structure, if it's not going to detriment financial fair play, I would say why not? Because if the Braff guy isn't on form or he gets injured and then Lawrence Carrius has to step in, that could be a bit sticky. Even though I, I don't mind Carrius. I honestly think Carrius gets a harsh, harsh reputation and I think he's a, he's a good goalkeeper, but that's a, he's good. He's not great. I wouldn't really want Carrius week in, week out in the Premier League. But for Newcastle, as he is now, a two or a three, where you may play him in the Cups or whatever, or you play him in a, in a, in a game where you need him, say if Pope was only out for a couple of weeks, I wouldn't mind Carrius stepping in for a couple of weeks. But five months? 
Oh, I didn't know about that one. So De Gea, I would say yes. I think he's. A, I think still think he's a very good goalkeeper who could offer a lot. Listen, elite winning mentality as well in that dressing room. He's won a lot internationally and at domestic level. He's, he's won a lot of trophies. He has that that uh, quality up there to do so that that mindset that we need in the dressing room to take us to the next level. Alongside the likes of Trippier, yeah, you can see what he's done after winning the league with Atletico Madrid. You know, bringing that kind of uh, character into the dressing room. So I think it'll be a good signing. It would all depend on the wages and stuff. But if it was a priority or a necessity, I would say no. I'm confident in Debrafka doing a job. And, and finally, finally, we've went on for quite a bit. Lastly, the other name that's been linked with Newcastle City that won't go away is Ruben Neves. Neves, who's now playing his trade in the Saudi Pro League, obviously after the Sandro Tonali ban, all eyes are on Newcastle, making moves in Saudi to get a great player on loan and try and beat around the... Uh, the FFP system and cheat the system, everyone was saying. That's why they had a rule brought into place where it was voted for a temporary ban on January moves for players on loan from different clubs that you're associated with. That obviously didn't go through. That that, that rule didn't actually get approved. So Newcastle are free to go ahead and sign a Ruben Neves or a Cristiano Ronaldo on loan from Saudi Arabia or anyone else along those lanes. However, this is what Neves has said today. This was on Sky Sports earlier. So Neves isn't interested in a move to Newcastle. He's rejected the idea of coming at Tyneside. He says there was interest in him before he moved to Saudi Arabia, but now that he's there, his family are settled there, and he's enjoying life there, so he doesn't want a move. So, Neves settled in Saudi. Fair play to him. But I tell you what, would it actually be different if an offer concrete came in for him and it was there? Could we get a loan move done for a few months? Would he fancy just a few months back in the Premier League? I wouldn't 100% rule that out, but if you listen to that from Neves the day, it looks like he wants to stay in Saudi. That'll do for this video, then people, let me know what you think in the comments below. Subscribe to my Pi Channel TV, and enjoy yourself.